Today we'll be going through and explaining all of the settings in the NVIDIA control panel. Hey guys, it's Joel here with Make Tech Easier. NVIDIA is looking like an unstoppable force in the great graphics card war. And even though AMD is making a fine fight of it with some quality GPUs at both ends of the market, the smart money's on NVIDIA. You may as well familiarize yourself with all those NVIDIA control panel settings if you're a gamer, because there's a good chance you'll be using them sooner or later. Here's our guide to help you find your way around. To open the NVIDIA control panel, you need to have installed NVIDIA graphics card drivers for your NVIDIA GPU. The control panel icon may then appear in your notification area in the bottom right corner of the Windows desktop, or you can access it by right clicking the desktop, then clicking NVIDIA control panel. This is where you can really tweak your GPU performance and get the most out of your gaming. Under adjust image settings with preview, click use the advanced 3D image settings then take me here to start tweaking your GPU settings to your liking. The same screen can be accessed by clicking Manage 3D Settings in the panel on the left. You can then select either Global Settings to apply changes across all your games or Program Settings to apply on a game-by-game -game basis. The following are the graphics settings and their functions. Many games block NVIDIA's ambient occlusion because it can conflict with the AO settings already in the game, which are usually superior. If you do choose to use AO, make sure you've switched off the version in-game first. There's plenty of evidence to suggest that the NVCP version of this is worth using over in-game versions. The performance impact is small and the visual improvement can be big. FXAA can be used instead of or in conjunction with in-game AA settings. However, it has the tendency to blur images so is probably best left off. Otherwise, gamma correction isn't much use. The effects of AA transparency are decent if small, smoothing out lines in transparent objects like grass, fences and so on. The performance impact is small so it can be worth trying. DSR. DSR renders the game at higher resolution than downsamples, giving crisper image across the board. If your PC can handle it, it's worth a try. When you do this, you can also set DSR smoothness to further improve image quality. The higher the smoothness, the higher the performance impact. Maximum pre-rendered frames. Buffers frames, pre-loading them on the CPU before they get to the GPU. This can potentially smooth out stuttering and frame skipping at the expense of latency or input lag. Stick with 3D application settings, but apply the different options if you have trouble. Monitor technology. This lets you select G-Sync if your monitor is capable of it. Always use G-Sync when you can. It lets your monitor run at higher refresh rates without screen tearing and other issues. Multi-frame sampled AA. This increases anti-aliasing without performance drops. If the game is compatible with MFAA, you basically get a free anti-aliasing boost. Power management mode. Optimal power conserves frame rendering or GPU load when the PC is idle. Adaptive lowers and raises GPU clocking depending on the game. Maximum performance keeps the GPU running at a higher power. This is louder and more strenuous on the GPU. Optimal power is recommended. Shader Cache. This stores crucial shader files for games on your hard drive, potentially improving performance and reducing load times. It doesn't use a lot of hard drive space and can have a positive effect on your game. Texture filtering. Related to antroscopic filtering, texture filtering broadly improves the appearance of flat textures during gaming. If you're suffering performance impact because of anisotropic filtering, you could try turning on anisotropic sample optimization. Negative LOD bias is only really useful for OpenGL games and doesn't offer anything that anisotropic filtering doesn't do better. Instead of using trilinear optimization, just set texture filtering to high quality or high performance, depending on how powerful your system is. Thread optimization allows multi-core CPU to handle some GPU tasks during gaming. Stick to auto, allowing the GPU to decide on a by game basis on whether or not to use it. Triple buffering adds a third buffer frame to the GPU when playing OpenGL games, preventing occasional performance stammers during frame buffering. If you have OpenGL games, set it to on alongside Vertical Sync. Vertical Sync or V-Sync adjusts in-game frame rates or the FPS to monitor refresh rates. 
for the Hertz, preventing screen tearing when Hertz is lower than the FPS. Use in-game settings, though fast sync can be good in older games or other games with very high frame rates. Virtual reality pre-rendered frame. Like maximum pre-rendered frames, this stores some frames in the CPU before they hit the GPU, which can prevent frame skips in VR. This is only for VR users, so experiment with the settings to see which get the best performance. And that's it guys. Play around with these settings, have some fun, but monitor performance carefully and be prepared to do a whole load of optimizing to get things just right. It's a fun process. But something to learn from this is that really there are only a few graphics tweaks that will actually improve your performance by a meaningful amount. Or maybe you've found a tweak that goes against that rule entirely. Well, if you have, let us know in the comments below. Well, that's it from me. As always, if you love tech as much as we do, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn the bell on, and you'll be notified by our latest and greatest tech savvy videos. See you next time.